Hey, so I thought today we could go back and look at the documentary which I recently uploaded. It's the first time which I've planned, shot and edited a documentary all by myself. So it's a mini documentary about five minutes long and it follows the journey of Camilla who chased her dream of starting a fruit wine company in the fields of Western Norway. It was great to work with her, super laid back and easy and uh, yeah, just a really wholesome and inspirational story. I'll tell you the setup which I used, I'll tell you things that I think didn't go very well, things that I think did go quite well and I'll pick out a few of my favourite shots as well and sort of give you a bit of background on them and what I was going to go for. So as usual it's the Sony A7S III and I've paired that up with the 24th of 70 G Master lens 2.8 on the front of that I've got 1 8 of Tiff in Black Pro Nest along with a 2 to 5 stop variable ND. Just a lightweight setup, keeps things really simple for me. It was a bit run and gun, I'm outdoors then I'm shooting indoors and yeah I just wanted to keep it nice and easy. And I used my tripod for a few shots but I'd say 90% of the whole documentary is shot handheld. So the overall plan for this mini documentary was to just spend two or three days with Camilla and follow her around doing the jobs that she actually needed to do. So apart from the shots in the barn with the actual wine glasses, sort of the wine being poured into them, everything else was candid and stuff that she actually had to do. Of course when shooting anything ideally you want as much time and control as possible but sometimes that's just not the case and you do need to adapt. So in this documentary I pretty much just had like an hour at the winery then a couple hours at the farm that kind of thing so I'm here there and everywhere I don't have too much control on how the day goes. So I worked out including the interview, I actually racked up about eight hours of total filming over this documentary, which means that, you know, if you had complete control and you scheduled it to a T, you could probably come up with something similar to what I've made here in just one day. Obviously the dream in the future is to shoot similar things over longer periods of time and with hopefully a small crew with me, but we'll get there eventually. So I decided to shoot the main interview for this documentary in the living room area of the farm that we were staying in. With the framing I opted to do something a little bit different, something which I actually have never done before on an interview setup and I actually had her on the opposite third looking sort of off to the left so yeah it's not something that I would usually do but in the moment it just looked right and yeah I just went for it. So I made sure to get the window in shot so you can see the mountain outside and it just kind of gives that nice hint to show off that cool location that we're shooting in. And then of course I've just found a house plant to put on the window ledge and give us a little bit of greenery. And having the window behind is great because you get that backlight on the subject and that's pretty handy because I only had one light with me. And that light is made by Falcon Eyes. I take it on every travel shoot because it barely weighs anything and it gives a really nice soft light. So that's what we've used to get that key light on our subject. And the great thing as well with this is we also got that nice eye light, which is always a good touch. So would I have done anything different with this shot? I have to admit, I would have loved to have two angles on this. I did have my second camera with me. I'm not quite sure why I didn't set it up. It would have been kind of cool to have that close up on the eyes maybe. Um, but yeah, two angles is always great for interviews. So that's probably what I would have done differently. So here are some shots of Camilla doing some weeding outside on the lovely Norwegian hills. Um, yeah, just tending to her plants basically and pretty happy with this footage. I think it all looks kind of cool. Um, but yeah, something then happened which made it much better than I expected. So as I was moving around just trying to find a good angle to shoot from, she started chatting to me and said some really good stuff and I saw that I had the mic on the top of the camera and politely as possible I just sort of cut in and sort of said, do you mind repeating what you've just said but I'm going to film it at the same time. So I wasn't really sure if the mic was going to do a good enough job. It was a bit of distance between us, but I was quite surprised when I got in the edit. It actually sounded quite clear. There's nothing in my educational background that equips me to do what I'm doing now. <laughs> so it's all learning by doing. I'm really glad that I did this as well because I think it's so easy to fall into that trap of thinking that a documentary can just be an interview or a few interviews with B-roll over the top. And don't get me wrong, that can work, but just having that sort of in the moment, authentic talking um, really helps and it kind of brings the documentary together. Going forwards, I think I'm definitely gonna try and do that a lot more, just keep that microphone on top of the camera and sort of get those really authentic moments with the subject sort of prompt them for little answers here and there. And uh, 
yeah, I think it'll work really well. So I'll just go through some of my favorite shots and let you know what I was going for. So here we've got a shot looking through a shed and personally, I really like that sneak peek of color um, on the outside, whilst kind of looking through that darkness of the shed and I think getting that foreground in there as well is quite important. Creates that little bit of perspective and depth in the image. So these shots outside are really cool. What I really like, obviously we've got that incredible location in the background that just helps us out a load. Um, but that pop of color from the plants is really helpful and being able to get in there and use it as a bit of foreground, that's always good. Um, it was a really overcast day as well and a little bit of mist around, um, which I think works really well and is probably quite true to the location. Um, that's probably the vibe that you would get if you actually lived somewhere like this. So something I'm quite conscious about when I'm shooting at the moment is I'm constantly looking for these really wide symmetrical angles I honestly just can't help it at this point. I just think it looks really nice on the eye and these shots keep finding their way to get into my work. And of course this video is not gonna be any different, so tons of lovely sheds and barns to shoot and obviously I'll shoot multiple variations of the same thing, um, but usually it's that straight on angle that finds its way into the final edit. So that pretty much covers everything about the dock. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it already, it would mean the world to me if you checked it out. I think you'll like it. It's a really wholesome and inspiring story. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.